Yes. Okay, so we're going to continue on with our animal class that we played with yesterday and talk, continue to talk about uh, what is the word that this statement represents. What's the big computer science-y word? Inheritance. Inheritance, very good. So the tiger gets all of the attributes of an animal. It inherits all of these methods and attributes that were created in this parent class. Anybody see the movie Enemy Mine? Yeah, I have. Enemy Mine. So the, the Drax had single inheritance. They had one parent and they had one child, and that child had one parent. So they didn't have to worry about, you know, if you try to do your genealogy, you've got two parents and they have two parents, and it just branches out hugely fast. So we think in terms of draconian inheritance here. It's uh, single inheritance. Uh, other languages have multiple inheritance, like Java. They could actually inherit from multiple classes, and that gets really complicated. Yeah, really. And and I've, in all my years, I've never seen the need to do multiple inheritance. So Ruby gets by that with what they call uh, uh, mix-ins and things that, that we'll talk about later that we can add additional functionality to a class. But for now, we're thinking of a single parent line. And uh, if we create a method in the animal class, that method is now going to be available in my tiger class. All right? So let's, uh, let's write a method in my animal class that will be available in my tiger class. So let's just do that. So let's write a method called identify. Identify. And this is just going to return a string that describes what this is. So it's going to say, uh, my name is name. And we use the instance variable name for this. And I am a something. All right, so um, I want to talk about the idea of classes a little bit. We've talked about them before. If I have a, let's just do it in IRB because it's easier. If I have, a, if I have this, what is a? String. It's a string, OK? Now, this is going to be very important. We're going to have a test on what types of variables are and things like this. Uh, it's a quiz in class, and I'm going to move it. I think I had it for Thursday. But I'm going to move it to the day that we have pre-registration to make you come in and do pre-reg, <coughs> which is May 8th, sorry, which is uh, a w uh, t like two weeks from tomorrow. So A is a string. I can, s I can call. There's a method in Ruby to find out what this is. I can say a.class, and it comes back with a string. That is a string. If I have A equals 10, what is A? It's an integer, and in this case, uh, the the integer, the fixed num is a subclass of the integer class. So it's a little more complicated with numbers. How about a float? If I well, I just told you, that's terrible. So a dot class is what float. Okay. So I can inspect. This is called uh, introspection or self. Uh, inspection or uh, what's the other word? Um, ah, I lost it. Anyway, uh, I know, <laughs> isn't that amazing? <laughs> so the idea is that Ruby can look at itself, and that makes it a very dynamic language. I can inspect my own self, I can look at myself and see what I am. And I can change what I am. I can add stuff. I can dynamically generate methods as my program uh, runs. And I think Skynet was written in Ruby, just to let you know. I think so. I Skynet. Think they would have been a little no, oh. no, not when you got parallel massive computers there. So anyway, uh, I can call on myself, and that's another. Uh, uh, keyword in Ruby, self, 
represents the object that I'm playing with, the object that I am. And so I can say self.class, and that will return whatever I am, whatever class I am as I'm calling this identify method. Okay, so in JavaScript, this is called this, and in C Sharp, I believe it's also this, right? So this is very common. Uh, Java, I think it's this. Uh, so self, they, they just, I don't know why they didn't stick with this, but they have self. So I can call, uh, you had a question? Puts tigger.identify, and let's see what I get. Ah, what happened? No, uh, that's weird. You just have to apply. Just on mine, I've always only had to apply down here. Okay, so it came back and says, I ran the the identify method on my Tigger object, and it says my name is Tigger and I am a tiger. Where did it get this tiger from? The name of the class, right? So. I can, I can do some really cool programming just by naming my classes uh, something useful. And in fact, Rails does this a lot. They name their classes based on the tables that you store in your database. And it can do this introspection and find out more about itself just by the name of the class. So why did it say tiger instead of animal? Because this method is actually in the animal class. Right, my tiger is the object, so self is a tiger object. It, this identify method is being inherited through this statement here. So my tiger class has this method called identify. You can think of it as being copied into this class. It's not really, it's actually looking and seeing, do I, does my tiger class have an identify method? No, so it goes to its parent. It goes to the Drac Papa here and says, do you have an identify method? Yes, okay, I'm gonna use that method, but I'm calling it within this context. I'm calling it within my tiger class context. All right, have I lost everybody there yet? Okay, good. So this tiger identify uses this method in this class, and so the self is a, t is a tiger class, and I'm calling tiger.class, converting it to a string, and it comes back with a capital T tiger. Isn't that great? That's just cool. So let's, uh, let's create another class of uh, zebra, and let, let it inherit from an animal as well. And I don't have to do anything in here. Let's see, I can say, uh, uh, my Zach, I'm, I'm going to give it a name, uh, zebra.new, and I pass what information? Name and, color. name and color, and I do that because the initialized method is inherited inside of the, the zebra class as well, just like our tiger was. So when my zebra class gets called to say, create me a new zebra, it says, do you have an initialized method? No, so go to your parent and look at that initialized method and utilize that information. So it's actually calling this top level method. So I'm gonna create a new one and we're gonna call it Zach. And we're gonna, he's gonna be uh, black and white. And then let's uh, put Zach.inspect and see what we got. Okay, uh, I got nothing. Oh, I did get it up here, sorry. Uh, here's my zebra object. It's got an instance variable. Remember, that's an instance variable. But what type of variable is my instance variable? String, very good, all right? That's, that's part of the quiz coming up, so think about that. Uh, and he's got a color. Uh, so let's see, can I tell my Zach the zebra to speak? Speak. 
got to spell speak right. Is that going to work? Why? <laughs> okay, good. So I have an undefined method speak for my zebra object. My zebra inherited from the animal class, and my animal class has no speak method. Neither does my zebra class. So it came here and says, do you have a speak method? No. Does my parent have a speak method? No. And then the animal is actually created from, you could think of this as coming from the object class. This is the top level Ruby class. This is just implied here. It then goes to the object and says, uh, let's put this out here as a comment. Does my object have a speak method? No. And so it finally says, sorry, undefined method. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, a lot. You can always see by, uh, let's see if we can figure it out here. Uh, those are all the methods that an object has. So these are the methods that are inherited by every class below it, like the new method. <coughs> see, the new method. Uh, these comparable type things here, greater than or equal to, etc. cetera. Uh, hash, class, uh, clone, dupe. Ancestors is cool. So I can look at, if I have a, a 10, uh, A is what? A fixed num. I can say A.ancestors. Ancestors. Isn't it ancestors? And I just had it. That's what I wrote. That's interesting. Pause. Uh, so I can say these are all the ancestors I call a.class and give me all of its ancestors. So uh, it is a fixed num, and its papa is an integer, and its papa is numeric, and its papa is comparable, goes to object, and then we go all the way up the top. Uh, they added these. Uh, in 193, this is called a basic object now. So this is the top-level parent. That's the Adam and Eve of the objects in my Ruby space, all right, my Adam. Well, yeah, <laughs> thank God you asked, right? You wanted to know. There, there you go. All right, so, let's, uh, so I don't have a speak in my zebra class, and I want my zebra to be able to talk. So... Where would be a good place to put a speak method? Okay, in my, in my, let's put one as a default in my animal class. So that, uh, and then we'll show you some cool stuff with this. So I can speak and say, uh, hello, my name is uh, name. All right. So now when I run it, it's going to look in the zebra class and say, do you have a speak method? No. Then I'm going to look at your dad or your mom here, and you're going to say, I have a speak method here, and it's going to get the attributes from the class. So uh, now it says, hello, my name is Zach. All right? So why did the tiger speak method do something different? Right, it goes to my tiger first, and it says, oh, you already have a speak method, so I'm going to use that one. That's called we overriding, we overrode the speak method in its parent class, just like we do when we write the 2S method. We're overriding what was already written for us at a higher level, and we're saying, use this one instead. All right, everybody got that? Any questions on that? That's a key piece to understand uh, in inheritance. So uh, if I create a new animal, uh, class hyena, I want that to inherit from an animal. And I don't have to do anything with my class. And I, I have all of those methods that are available to me. So I can say, 
uh, whoopee, that's maybe too hard to spell, is hyena.new, and I'm going to pass in whoopee, and he's going to be, I don't know, brown. Then I can say puts whoopee.speak. So what is whoopee going to say here? Which method is going to be executed? There you go. Hello, my name is Whoopi. Right? Very good. So here we go. Hello, my name is Whoopi. I can call the identify method. I can say puts Whoopi dot in identify. And it's going to say, uh, my name is Whoopi and I am a hyena. Yeah, I always, I always end up in Lion King in this one for some reason. I don't know why it's fun. Uh, so the, uh, just by defining a class with a name, I've inherited all kinds of methods that my hyena has. And it has the, the additional effect of knowing what it is. It's a hyena. It's not a zebra. I can say, is my... Uh, I can say, is Whoopi the same as my Zach? Is that going to be true or false? Okay, false. They are not the same. What if I created a different uh, hyena? Anybody know a different hyena name? And Joe. Steve, Steve the hyena, Joe, and he's also brown. And I could say, is uh, Whoopi equal to Joe? Is that true? Who says it's true? You, you're hold, withholding opinion. <laughs> you think so? All right, let's see. So they're false. Why are they? Why is it false? They're both hyenas, but they're different objects. It's a completely different object. It has different names. It's a different thing inside. Even if I named it the same, even if I called this guy Whoopi, they're siblings. I guess you could call them siblings. Even if I name them the same, it has the same properties. It's a different object. Remember, if we inspect it, every new object has a different location and memory. Okay, so they are completely separate no matter how much you make them the same. All right, have I confused everybody there yet? All right. Getting there, getting there. All right, good. So uh, <laughs> this will probably throw you right now then. We're going to go in and change, <laughs> change some things. Let's look at this speak here. Uh, this tiger is going to call this speak method. So whenever I create a tiger, he's going to call this method instead of his parents speak method, right? Everybody see that? We've overridden that method. We're going to call that one instead. So now there's some cool things we can do with that. Um, we can say, I want to call my parents speak method in addition to what I'm doing. Okay, so there's a special keyword again called super. And if I call the super method, and it's going to say, okay, look at my parent for the same method called speak and return to me, basically execute my parent's method called speak. That's all it's doing. Execute that and return whatever that's going to return. <laughs> which happens to be this string, right? So now if I run this, my tiger no longer says grr. He says, hello, my name is Tigger. Well, we might want to add some additional features, OK? I want to say, hello, my name is, is uh, Tigger. And I want to add the grr at the end to make him different, right? I want to make my little animal, my tiger, slightly different. So super calls this method, which returns what? A string. OK, good. So this gets replaced by whatever this is. So this is 
in a sense, what type of variable? A string. Uh, and I can take a string and I can add more stuff to it. There you go. So now when I call my tiger speak method, it's going to first call super, which returns this string. And then I'm going to add gur on the end of it and return that as my speak method. Yeah, it could be. So there we go. Hello, my name is Tigger. Grr. Isn't that great? So I can override and apply additional features to that at the same time. So I can make use of some generic methods above me in my parent class and add some additional features to that to make them separate. So what would a ze zebra say? I could say super plus um, nay. What does Whoopi say? He says Mufasa. Right? Ooh, Mufasa. All right, Hakuna <laughs> Matata. No, that's, uh, that's Pumba. So now when I run my, oh, I got a problem. I didn't define it, right? I don't have a method called speak. Very good. So I need to write my speak method, indent correctly, add my end. So now I'm overriding the speak method in the animal class, but I'm still making use of some of the animal class's speak method. So now I say, uh, hello, my name is Zach Mufasa. Isn't that cool? Zach is a zebra. <laughs> All right. So, well, the Zach we have here, he spells his name differently. So, uh, this was actually, but anyway, this was a, a Zach I had a couple of years ago that always joked with me in class, and so I made him a zebra. All right. Any uh, any questions on where we're at here so far? All right, in addition to overriding the uh, animal class, I can also override, I mean, the speak method. I can override the initialize method as well. Say I want my zebras, uh, I identify my zebras in my zoo based on how many stripes they have. All right, that's different. Every zebra has a different number of stripes. I'm assuming that. I don't know that for sure. But uh, so I can override the initialize method now that I know what super is. And what does uh, the initialize have in it? It had the name and the color, right? So I need to have that information to create my animal class. So I'm going to pass in my name and my color. And then I want to have an additional value of stripes. Stripes. All right. So I want to store the number of stripes that I have in an, in an instance variable that's only available in my zebra object. And so I'm going to take that stripes, store it away. And then I need to tell my animal parent that I've created a new animal. So to do that, I'm going to call the super method and pass it the name and the color. It, it does. Isn't that great? So I, I need to pass that information up the chain and tell my animal class to create itself, as, apply my color and my name to my instance variables, and in addition, I'm going to have a third instance variable called stripes. But that's only going to be available for my zebra class. My tiger doesn't have the stripes here. He might, but in this case, we don't have that. So let's run this and see what happens. Uh, I get wrong number of arguments, two for three. So when I'm trying to create my uh, zebra, remember, I used to only need two. Now I need to pass a third variable in here, which is the number of stripes that the zebra might have. All right, so now my zebra has 20 stripes. I have a new instance variable called stripes. I've got still the name and the color instance variables. 
and my tiger doesn't have the stripes in it, okay, because only my zebra class has this additional information. So I can, I can create a new zebra, add some additional features to my zebra, but still utilize my parents' class for all of the commonalities that an animal might have. Does that make sense? <laughs> Have we glazed over yet? I think we're getting close. Getting close to glazing here. All right, I think that's enough. Um, play with this at home. We're going to continue on with this animal stuff because there's so much we can do with it. And then I'm going to create a zoo class to hold all my animals. Okay, we've got to have a zoo. Now, that is going to get very close to the assignment that's not extra credit, which is due a week from, two weeks from tomorrow, which is the jukebox and the songs class, okay? A jukebox holds a bunch of songs. A zoo holds a bunch of animals. So pay attention, that's what the assignment is gonna be about. All right, that's good, stop. <laughs>